Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Access Control. Today we're going to be talking about edge versus access control, and then we're going to talk about some access control concepts. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about edge versus access control. When access to network resources is granted or denied by a firewall, it is considered to be at the edge of the network. So that is edge control. While this may work well in smaller and simpler networks, it can become very complicated and cumbersome as the network grows. Through implementing other access control measures, these complications can be reduced while at the same time the security of the network may be increased. This idea is called Network Access Control, or NAC. These access control measures do not replace the need for firewalls. They do, however, allow the firewalls to concentrate on controlling network traffic into and out of the network. That is what they do best, and that is what they should be concerned about not who or what type of device can connect to the network. Firewalls are not very efficient at that aspect of edge access control. Let's move on to some access control concepts. First up is authentication via 802.1x. 802.1x is a popular method of authenticating client devices and users on either Ethernet or wireless networks. When a client device, which is called the supplicant, attempts to join a network, an authenticator, which is usually a switch or wireless access point, requests the supplicant's credentials. The authenticator then forwards the client's credentials to an authentication server, or AS, which is typically running software such as Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, or RADIUS. The authentication server evaluates the credentials and either informs the authenticator to allow or deny the supplicant device access to the protected network. If the credentials are validated, the authenticator, that remember that's that switch or wireless access point, grants the supplicant access to the protected network. 802.1x is very popular in enterprise type networks. Access control can also be achieved through posture assessment. This is the process of evaluating more than just the client's credentials. Commonly, posture assessment is used to evaluate the type of device that is requesting a connection. Is it a tablet, or is it a PC, or is it a mobile phone, so on and so forth. Posture assessment can be used to evaluate the type of anti-malware software that's on the device and how updated that software is. During this process, a check is also performed to determine if malware is present on the device. Posture assessment is commonly used to evaluate the operating system as well, as in how updated that operating system is and what the registry settings are at the time that access is being requested. If the client passes the assessment, it is allowed onto the protected network. If the client does not pass the assessment, usually one of two actions are taken. The first action could be that the client is notified of the rejection and what has to occur before it can pass the posture assessment. Does it need an operating system update? Does it need anti-malware installed? So on and so forth. The other action that is commonly taken when a device has failed the posture assessment is that it is passed on to a remediation server which will then attempt to resolve the cause of the failed posture assessment. It will do this with no user interaction required. Once it has remediated the device and it can pass the assessment, it then goes through the process again and is allowed onto the network if it passes. It's time to move on to the posture assessment process. One of two types of agents, think software code, is used on client devices during the assessment process. It could be a persistent agent, 
which is permanently loaded on the device and starts when the operating system loads. This type of agent can provide more functionality than the other version. A persistent agent is more likely to be used if that device regularly connects to the network. The other type of agent is a non-persistent agent. When the client device attempts to access the network, the agent is loaded onto the device to help in the assessment process. Once the assessment process is completed, pass or fail, the agent is removed from the device. A non-persistent agent would work best for a guest device. When devices attempt to connect to the protected network, they are placed on a guest network with very limited access. They are left on the guest network until the assessment process is completed. In some cases, particularly when the client fails the anti-malware check, the client device may be placed into a quarantine network, which will only have access to a remediation server, and it cannot move beyond that quarantine network until it can successfully pass the posture assessment. Now that concludes this session on network access control. I talked about edge versus access control, and then we concluded with some access control concepts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I trust you'll watch another one soon.